Hello awesome students, it's Dr. Folks. Today we're going to go over how to cite YouTube videos within your essay using APA format. Now specifically we're going to talk about entries for your references page and we're also going to talk about narrative citations as well as parenthetical citations. So to begin there's some information that you're going to need to gather for your entry on your references page and that information includes the author's name of the video, the username for the video, the publication date of the video, the title of the video, of course, and then last but not least, the URL. So if we take a look at a typical YouTube page, I'm gonna show you where to find all of that information. If you look at the bottom of the page, you're gonna see the username. In this particular case, it's studied with Dr. Foltz. You're also gonna see the date that was published. In this case here, it's April 23rd, 2020. You're also going to see the title of the video, which is Harrison Bergeron by Kurt Vonnegut. And then you see that other information that goes with it, where it says analysis, plot summary, basic theme analysis. That's all part of the title of the video, as well as those lines that are there. And then last but not least, if you look, of course, at the top of the page, you're gonna see the URL. So this is where you're gonna get all the information. Now, the part of the information that might be missing, of course, is the real name of the person behind the username. In this case here, we know the name of the person, it's me, so it would be James Foltz. But if you don't have that information, don't fret at all. I'm gonna show you in a little bit what to do with it. So first of all, let's jump over to look at how the references, uh, how the reference entry should take a look. I wanna draw your attention to the two bracketed items there. The first bracketed item is the username, and we're gonna keep the brackets and we're gonna actually put the username in there. And then the second bracketed item is the word video. We're actually gonna keep the word video in the bracket. That's never gonna go away. So if you take all that information that I showed you where to get and you plug it in, it should look something like this. And notice that the bracketed information where it says study with Dr. Foltz, that's in the brackets. And then also, if you notice that word video is still there too. So what do you do if you don't have the name of the person? Well, if you don't have the name of the person, just exclude it, of course. And then what becomes the name, if you will, is the username. So there's the example down below. One thing that I want to draw your attention to is that the username is no longer in brackets. That disappears because now it becomes the name proper. But everything else is exactly the same with the exception of where the username is and then the use of brackets. So then our next question is, how do we create a parenthetical citation? Well, just like with creating an entry, you need to gather evidence or excuse me, you need to gather information. The information that you need to gather in this case here is mandatory two pieces, but then there's a timestamp, which is an optional piece. So as you see here, you need the author's last name, you need the year, and then optional is the timestamp. I always recommend having that because the more information you give to the reader, the better. So in our case here, it's gonna be Foltz 2020, and then our timestamp is just sort of make believe here. It's at the two minute and 15 second mark. Now, one thing I wanna keep keep you in mind, or rather I want you to keep in mind here is that the default or rather the standard for recording the timestamp only uses two sets of numbers for the minutes and the seconds, because most YouTube videos aren't going to broach the one hour mark. But if it does, meaning if you're going to cite a YouTube video that is an hour or longer, then you'll need to add a third set of numbers to represent the hour mark. So the structure of your citation is just very traditional for APA. You're gonna have the name, you're gonna have the year and the timestamp. And think about the timestamp as really the page number. So that's the way that's gonna function, not just within the parathetical citation, but for the citation throughout the duration of this video here. So if you plug in the information, this is the way it should look like. So notice as always that you have commas between each portion of this parenthetical citation, and then there's appropriate spacing. So then the question is, what do you do if you don't have the author's name? Well, once again, you're gonna gather information, but instead of having an author's name, you're gonna have the username. So in our hypothetical example, the username is study with Dr. Foltz as, our, as opposed to simply Foltz. So what's the structure? Again, it's gonna be the same exact thing as before, except for instead of having the name as the first portion of the entry, username is going to replace that. So when you enter that information, it's gonna look messy. So notice how much information, or rather how much space that username study with Dr. Foltz takes up. And you're gonna be tempted to put it in quotation marks. You're gonna be tempted to put it into um, italics, but you don't want to. So the way it should be is the standard without any, we'll say effects, if you will, around or on the text itself. 
So the next question that we want to answer is, where does this citation go? Again, we're treating it like any other APA citation. And so the answer is going to be after the evidence. So the citation will always go after the evidence, but it will go before the period of the sentence, regardless of where the citation is located. So here's our citation once again, Fultz 2020, and then the timestamp at the two minute and 15 second mark. This is our hypothetical, or excuse me, our hypothetical sentence here, where it says this is a sentence with in-text quote to show the citation. So the in-text quote, we're pretending that's our evidence. So we're gonna put our citation right after the quote, right after the piece of evidence. Notice that it's not inside the quotation mark. That's important. It's outside of the quotation mark. What do we do if the evidence is at the end of the sentence? Well, we're gonna do the same thing. We're still gonna put the citation at the right after the piece of evidence. So in this case here, it's gonna go right at the end of the sentence. It's gonna go outside of the quotation mark, but notice it's inside the period. And so each, the citation always has to be in the period, or excuse me, inside the sentence, but not within the quotation mark. So again, I wanna draw your attention the citation never goes in the quotation mark because if you put it in the quotation mark, what you're telling the reader is that you're quoting, like what you're, the evidence you're pulling, you're literally quoting that citation. That citation is the words of the author, which of course would not be accurate. What about a narrative citation? Where, what do we do with that? Well, the narrative citation, you need the exact same information as you would need for the parenthetical citation. So in our example, of course, you need the author's last name, the year, as well as the timestamp. And again, it's optional, but I strongly recommend you use a timestamp because it functions like a page number. The more information you can give to the reader, the better. So our example, it's gonna remain the same. It's always gonna be Fultz 2020, and then two minutes and 15 second mark. Here is our pretend uh, sentence, if you will. So notice that we have the word Fultz that's gonna start us out. It says, Fultz said the awesome quote, and then we have a timestamp in his video. So let's take a look at where all the information is going to go. The narrative citation uses the username or the author's name as sort of the, the, the impetus of where the quote is coming from. So in this case here, we're saying Fultz said this. Notice where the year is. The year isn't going to go after the piece of evidence. Instead, the year is going to be tethered right next to the uh, last name, or it's going to be tethered to the username. And then last but not least, if you do have a timestamp, which again, you should put that timestamp right after the piece of evidence. And as before, notice how, how the piece of, or excuse me, the timestamp is not within the quotation marks at all. And again, if you don't have the, um, the real name of the person and you only have the username, it's gonna look exactly the same as before. And again, you're gonna be tempted to use, put that username in special fonts, whether it's italicized or bold or underlined or even quotation marks, don't. Treat it as if it's the real name there. And that's how you create a narrative citation. And then last not least here with this narrative citation, once again, you wanna put that, um, if, the, if the piece of evidence is at the end of the sentence, you wanna put that timestamp after the piece of evidence, but inside the period here. So that's it. That's all we have to say about that. If you have any questions, by all means, send me an email, leave a question in the comments, and as always, like and subscribe. Have a great day.